We've got some fresh images of 3i Atlas, a third ever interstellar object observed from Earth, currently racing through our solar system. Now, astronomers have captured that moment live, streaming in real time around the globe of them watching all of this. Take a look at Something this. is happening in our solar system that no one can ignore. The interstellar object known as 3i Atlas has defied every prediction, baffled scientists, and now, New evidence suggests it may not be random at all. This isn't just a rock passing through. Its path is too precise, its behavior too deliberate. Each new observation raises more questions than answers. Strange plumes, unnatural brightness, and a trajectory that seems almost intentional. Telescopes across the world have turned to follow it, but what they're finding doesn't fit any framework of comets or asteroids we've ever known. And here's the unsettling part. Time is running out. Soon, 3i Atlas will slip behind the glare of the sun, disappearing from view. But before it does, new evidence has finally allowed scientists to piece together what may be its true mission. Evidence that changes everything. Officially, we call it 3i Atlas. 3i, as in the third interstellar object ever found, ATLS for the survey that first flagged it. Interstellar means it doesn't belong to us. It started around some other star, in some other disk of gas and dust, and only now is it paying our solar system a one-time visit. That alone makes it special. The first one we saw, Amuamua, was a riddle that never slowed down long enough for a proper look. The second, 2i Borisov, looked familiar, very comet-like, even if its passport said another star. 3i Atlas is different. It's early enough, bright enough, and weird enough that our best instruments finally have a worthy opponent. If you wanted to test for whether we're ready to do real interstellar small body science, not just headlines, you couldn't script it better. Let's pin down the basics. The discovery timeline stretches back farther than the initial announcement. When the Atlas survey raised the flag in early July, the object sat between Mars and Jupiter. Then people dug through older images and found it in test data from May, way out near Jupiter's orbit and already brightening faster than simple geometry would explain. That's your first eyebrow raise. Typical solar system comets are mostly water ice. They don't really turn on until they're well inside Jupiter's orbit. Further out, it's too cold for water to sublimate. But 3i Atlas was already waking up on the far side. That points to hypervolatiles, carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide doing the heavy lifting. In plain English, this thing started talking early. And when it talks, it changes color. As the coma built up, think of that as the fuzzy, glowing atmosphere the comet makes for itself, the object shifted toward emerald. Green comets aren't rare, but the why matters. In the usual suspect, Green comes from dicarbon, C2, breaking apart in sunlight. With 3i Atlas, observers started seeing signs that cyanide, Cn, might be stealing the show, while the classic dicarbon line lagged or barely appeared. That's not just trivial. If cyanide pops early and dicarbon waits or never really arrives, that hints at unusual layering in the crust or a formation environment where the chemistry didn't match the recipe we see around our sun. It's like opening a spice cabinet and finding everything in the wrong jars. Still spices, still real, just wrong for your kitchen. Even the dust acts off script. Polarization measurements, basically the way scattered sunlight is oriented after bouncing off the coma, show a strong negative branch at small phase angles. Translation, the light is doing something you rarely see in bright active comets, unless the grains are ridiculously fine and pristine. That kind of dust is more outer wilderness than inner suburbs. If interstellar comets tend to carry that ultra-delicate stuff, it could be that our local regulars are the weirdos, and these visitors are the baseline. In other words, maybe our family portrait has been upside down.
Size? That one's a moving target and a great lesson in how real science works. High-resolution images can cap the nucleus at a few kilometers across, but brightness rises and falls as the dust output changes, so early guesses swing around. One week you hear 10, 12 kilometers, another week someone floats bigger numbers based on how bloated the CO2 coma looks. The wise answer is wait. As the geometry changes and the coma thins, imaging and photometry will converge. The number will land where the physics tells it to land. That's not a dodge, that's the process. Meanwhile, the tail. Every Comet fan knows the rule. Sunlight pushes dust and gas away from the sun, so the tail points out. Simple. Except, 3i Atlas spent part of its early act looking like it didn't get the memo. Structure and brightness seem to lean sunward in some images. Q confusion. Is it a trick of perspective? A narrow jet pointed toward us that only looks wrong in projection? Or something stranger about the particle sizes and how they respond to the solar wind? When your dog sticks its head out the car window, the ear should flap back, not forward. That's the vibe. There are natural explanations on the table. Physics lets you be weird without being impossible. But it's exactly the kind of odd detail that keeps theorists awake. All of that is just a warm-up for the chemistry. Point a serious infrared spectrograph at 3i Atlas and the headline writes itself. The coma is dominated by carbon dioxide, with water trailing way behind. Not just a little more CO2 than usual, but a ratio that flips the script on the average comet. In numbers you can feel, a cloud rich in CO2 with only traces of the water vapor we expect. That's startling, and it matters. It says the place this object formed, or the way its surface was processed by radiation for eons, isn't a clone of our own comet nursery. It's alien in the most scientific meaning of the word, made somewhere else, under different rules. And when a single ice ball can carry a chemical accent that strong, you start to realize how diverse those somewhere else's must be. Now, because we live on the Internet, any anomaly sprouts a flock of theories by sunrise. Nickel without iron shows up in a spectrum. That's weird, those two metals are usually forged and found together, so the speculation engines kick on. Brightness kicks up out beyond Jupiter. Either the CO2 explanation's right, or the object switched on its lights. A green coma with muted dicarbon? Either a crustal puzzle will crack, or an engineer's paint job. You know the dance. And here's the honest position. For most of these, Probably natural is the favorite in the betting markets. Prove it either way is what matters. That's how you separate mystery from mythology. Meanwhile, the clock is still ticking. The geometry of the orbit lines up perihelion, the closest approach to the sun, right as the object ducks behind the sun from Earth's point of view. That's not a thriller cliffhanger. That's just celestial mechanics being rude. But it means we have to grab what we can now and plan a handoff for when it reemerges. Before conjunction, every big eye is on duty. Ground-based giants for deep spectra and high-speed imaging. Hubble's sharp view for nucleus constraints and the infrared workhorses for those volatile fingerprints. Add to that a rare treat. For a short window, Mars has a cleaner look than Earth. European spacecraft in Martian orbit. Mars Express and the ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter can try to pick out the bright envelope from the darker core and maybe hint at the nucleus shape beneath the glow. No one expects glossy close-ups, but separating gas cloud from solid thing would be a win. Now, after the sunblock, December becomes Act Two. The object will be dimmer, farther, cooler. But with the early phase chemistry in hand and a better sense of how the coma evolved, even faint spectra can answer big questions. Did that green stay cyanide-driven? Or did dicarbon finally wake up? Did the tail's brightness profile steepen, which would point to finer grains lofted mater, or flatten, coarser stuff ruling the outflow? 
Did consistent non-gravitational accelerations show up, the subtle push you see when jets act like tiny thrusters? And if so, do they point to a repeating jet fixed on the surface? Those aren't just boxes to tick. They're the difference between we saw something cool once and we learned how interstellar comets actually work. And yes, the tug of war over what is it really will keep humming in the background. Cautious voices will keep saying comet doing comet things just at unusual settings. The spicier voices will keep pointing to alignments and timing and daring you to imagine a different story. Here's the healthy middle. Let the wild ideas sharpen the test you run on the tame ideas. If a non-gravitational acceleration looks suspiciously steady, map it against rotation and see if a jet geometry explains it. If a sunward structure appears in one set of images, check the viewing angle and particle sizes before you rewrite physics. If nickel lines show up without iron, learn whether the dust and gas separate differently under extreme radiation before you assume a factory in the sky. Curiosity is allowed. Discipline is required. So where does the true mission line fit into all this? If you strip away the headlines and the hype, it's actually simple. 3i Atlas is here to make us better at this. It's forcing a global team to act like a single instrument. Surveys that find, space telescopes that fingerprint, ground mirrors that dissect, and orbiters in the right place at the right time to catch what Earth can't see. It's teaching the public how real-time science feels. Elastic numbers that firm up with time. Color that hints at chemistry but doesn't guarantee it. Tales that tell the truth once you've done the geometry. And it's widening the palette of what a comet can be. So that the next time a stranger from another star appears, we don't waste the first month arguing about definitions. We start measuring. There's one more twist down the road. On its way out, months from now, 3i Atlas will pass near Jupiter. Near, in the celestial sense. Still tens of millions of kilometers off. It won't be a meet and greet, but it is a reminder. If we want to truly intercept a future interstellar visitor, we need a playbook and hardware designed for speed. A rapid response probe that can launch fast, aim fast, and eat up Delta V like it's breakfast. That's the long tail of what this object is doing to us. It's making us plan like we expect more of these, because we should. For now, the story is a braid of urgency and restraint. We have a narrow window before the sun steals the stage. We have instruments that can carve real answers out of faint light. We have a mystery that resists cheap conclusions, but rewards patience. If you need one image to carry with you, take this. A green-tinged coma swelling in the dark. Not because it's signaling us or plotting anything, but because alien ice met familiar sunlight and the universe did what it always does. It told the truth in photons. Our job is to listen well enough to hear it. So no, 3i Atlas is probably not a disguised ship, a living cloud, or a test we're about to fail. And yes, it is absolutely the strangest, most useful visitor we could have asked for right now. It's a classroom a stress test, and a mirror. It shows us a chemistry set from another kitchen, a dust recipe our models have to swallow, and a timetable that doesn't care about our schedules. If there's a mission here, maybe it isn't the comets at all. Maybe it's ours. To meet the unknown with better questions, better coordination, and a little more humility than the last time. We don't get to choose when these things arrive. We do get to choose how ready we are when they do. And that's the part the headlines always missed. The real story isn't whether this visitor is natural or not. It's that a planet of curious primates built enough glass and math to ask it the right questions before it vanished from sight. The more we learn, the weirder it gets. The weirder it gets, the better our tools become. Time is running out for now.
But on the other side of the sun, the story picks up again. And when it does, we'll have a cleaner ear for the music and steadier hands on the knobs. And that's not just good news for Three Eye Atlas. That's the start of a new habit. Ready, set, study. Every time the galaxy sends us a messenger. <laughs>